talk about Indian billionaires sponsoring Harvard University and what they're actually sponsoring. Can you explain to our viewers some of this nexus of this Harvard University and Indian billionaires, please? Yeah, you know, first of all, I want to say that I don't I want to tell the billionaires I'm not trying to silence you. I'm not trying to attack you personally. You are good people in your personal life. I know some of you and I, I have great respect for you. Also, as industrialists, you created jobs, created a great Indian economy, and we're very proud of you. But when it comes to philanthropy, and I'm only talking about the philanthropy part, even within philanthropy, they're doing very good things. I mean, they're feeding Indian people, they're, they're eliminating hunger, uh, doing something for the, uh, the downtrodden, the economic underclass. They're doing a lot of good work. But when within the philanthropy, they're, they're funding liberal arts, social sciences, humanities, they're out of their league. They are, they are good at automobile manufacturing. Somebody is the best steel manufacturer. Somebody is in pharmaceuticals. If they were to fund philanthropy in those areas, they would be really good. But they're funding philanthropy, which ends up having bringing in liberal arts models. And these liberal arts models bring in critical caste theory. And they bring in political uh, you know, issues concerning India. And at, in those areas, they funded Harvard. Uh, and 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 produce some of the work being done is very anti-India and anti-Hindu. So, for instance, Anand Mahindra uh, has funded what is called the Mahindra Humanities Center. Now, imagine you put your family name on it and you put your millions of dollars on it, and it's all well known. And and they are very proud that uh, this billionaire is funding us. And then there is this uh, Lakshmi Mittal and Family South Asia Institute at Harvard. Big name, huge, fifty million dollars mm. to start with. Uh, then there is this Piramal, uh, uh, you know, uh, for public health. Now you would think that uh, public health has no public health in uh, an Indian funding public health in Harvard would be uh, making sure they understand that India did a good job in COVID, that Indian vaccines are uh, India is a great vaccine manufacturer that uh, that uh, India has actually used a lot of traditional methods, traditional medicine, Ayurveda and so on, to uh, solve the problem, deal with the problem very cost effectively on a very large scale. In the India story of how it managed COVID is, is, a, is a major untold story. And you would think that somebody who's funding, who's patriotic and funding public health in Harvard and having conferences on public health issues would focus on the positive. And you would, you would think that they would actually bring in, they would be championing Ayurveda in the United States. Yes. But rather than that, it, it's the other way around. It's Harvard. The Piramal Center is part of the T.H. Chan School of Public Health. And T.H. Chan is a Chinese. The Chinese gave the largest ever donation to Harvard. And they created this T.H. Chan, which is named after the father of these people who are the billionaires in China. Uh, and so this T.H. Chan School of Public Health is Harvard's School of Public Health. So they are defining the discourse and Piramal Center is a subset of that. It's a subsidiary. Imagine what a disgrace that the Indians are now sitting in a subsidiary or uh, of a, a Chinese establishment within Harvard. I mean, so we are not calling the shots and it's not promoting what is best for India in terms of image. Um, so I we have written a lot. There's a chapter of the Piramal Center uh, we are not criticizing Mr. Piramal. He's a nice guy. I've met him. Ajay Piramal is a wonderful person. I just want the people to know that. But their philanthropy, it seems that they're not controlling, that somebody else is controlling it. Maybe they wrote a check and they looked the other side, did not do what industrialists call due diligence. They're supposed to do due diligence. You're not supposed, you would never invest in a factory without due diligence. Yeah. And so you will bring in subject matter experts, whether it's automobiles or steel or pharma, to do due diligence. They, they know that industry and they would do diligence. And even after investing, you would get annual reports. Now, I, I don't know what kind of due diligence they did in liberal arts by bringing in good, solid people who know liberal arts uh, before making these investments. And I'm not sure that they are doing any annual reports from an independent, neutral person, not Harvard itself giving them an annual report, which would be self-serving, but somebody like us or somebody who speaks from the voice of the Bharatiya conscious, uh, conscience and says that okay, we will we will be your eyes and ears. We are not interfering. We have no authority to uh, you know uh, uh, censor, but we will give you an annual report on what is being done in your name and with your money. And you ought to know that. And yeah. they, I don't know if they've ever done that. I'm, yeah. I'm talking about an independent report. 
and then they should make this report public and say to tell the public this is what's being done by us with our money at Harvard and this is what an independent review says. Now our book is basically an independent audit of what the billionaires are doing at Harvard and what they're doing unintentionally. I don't think they know about this necessarily, but the unintended con consequences include a lot of mess for India, a lot of rhetoric about dismantling India, a lot of anti-India people being brought into Harvard at conferences and given money and given grants. So this is this uh, breaking India force effectively and Hindu phobia force effectively uh, has its origins uh, in, in Harvard to a big extent, and the funding of Indians legitimizes this. Harvard goes and goes around saying, you know, such and such famous person in India is funding this chair or funding this program or this conference is named after them or something like that. And so, you know, it it makes it legitimate. Yeah, and it's so, validation. Yes, it's a legitimizing the the, mm -hmm. the if the Indian icons legitimize all this work at Harvard. You've given them a blank check to do whatever the heck they want in your name. And I think that's that's very risky and dangerous for the Indian billionaires. I hope they see us as providing a service to bring some problems to their attention as red flags that they better investigate. Please remember to subscribe to us and switch on the notifications for this channel. For our other social media links, more content and to support our work, please visit citti.net. Dhanyavad. Namaskar.